on Giants. Mounds, monsters, myth, and man, or Why We Want to Be Small, by Brad Lockwood. Copyright 2010, Brad Lockwood, all rights reserved. Thinking they'd found the original honorary, grave robbers in the 18th and 19th century often quit digging after finding the first skeleton, leaving others undisturbed for later, more thorough, professional excavations. Footnote. A nearby site excavated in 1941 southwest of Vandalia, New York, in the Allegheny Valley by Dr. Arthur C. Parker, showed multiple intrusive burials as well as the damage done by collectors and or treasure hunters. In this case, the excavation was actually spurred by recent looting. From the original notes, courtesy of the American Philosophical Society, Dr. Parker wrote, quote, We were spurred to action by a report that a looted mound was once more undergoing excavation by a layman. Fortunately, the second relic hunter destroyed little and found nothing. However, this was not the case of King Tanti Jimerson, a local Seneca collector, who first opened the mound about 1920 and left a gaping hold in its center so that the tumulus represented a crater. Of any artifacts that may have been found, nothing definite is known. Despite multiple looters, Dr. Parker's team still identified six total burial pockets in this one mound. All contained traces of ochre and burning rituals, and of as interesting as it was regrettable, quote, above Each of these concentration of calcin bones were sprinkled fragments of bone that connected all six burials, making it impossible to determine where each pocket presented a single complete burial or not. In the end, a whole original skeleton was not found during this 1941 excavation. What Seneca collector and Indian King Tanti Jimerson found in 1920 may never be known. Shallower lazier. These looters grabbed the first thing they could find. Then as today, laziness abounds. Whether looting or spreading tall tales long ago debunked or blogging, the goal of uncovering with ease skeletons or snippets, interesting articles, seems to be shared by too many, leaving the real work to professionals, archaeologists, anthropologists, researchers, and honest authors. But this particular site doesn't make sense. Weren't these same hills and valleys covered with ice, created into what we see now some 13,500 years ago? Could this single burial site stay undisturbed, even as the hill it rests upon was being sculpted? Later or earlier, pre-glacial or post, unglaciated rock. Another expedition without explanation. Bill Campbell doesn't believe in giants. He never has. He's heard the stories, been invited to lectures, but he still doesn't believe in them. This is unnerving to me, especially because he says so in the same matter-of-fact style that I so trust. What he's sure of is these stones, on land his family has worked for over a century, are unique. Coming up next. On Giants. Neoconservatives, war hawks, and enthusiasts of giants and early civilizations all praise their respective Cheneys, while academics, scholars, soldiers, strategists, conspiracy theorists, war crime investigators, Iraqis, and archaeologists struggle to make sense of their fantastic claims. Whether declaring that Americans would be greeted by Iraqis as liberators, or that the creators of forts and mounds in Cattaraugus County were an immense and advanced race, The gross statements of both Dick and Tiapolian Cheney seem to fall apart after further inspection. 